What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. For today's video we'll be taking a look at this new dual band radio from VGC called the VRN76 and the optional BHM79 Bluetooth speaker mic. This radio is the latest in APRS capable radios and while it's feature packed it luckily won't break the bank and even comes in a flat dark earth tone which I'm always a sucker for. But let's get into it and join me as we take a deeper look at this radio. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Before we get into it, VGC sent me this radio for this review, but as always, I'll be giving my honest opinions about it. As mentioned in the intro, the VRN76 is one of the latest APRS capable radios that have come out, but this one is more in the affordable range compared to something like the Kenwood THD75. Not only is this an affordable APRS radio, it is also capable of pairing with your phone for more capabilities like the Kenwood can. But you're currently limited to using the Android or iOS app that VGC offers, whereas the Kenwood offers a full KISS TNC that can be used with whatever software and apps that support it. Now if you're unfamiliar with APRS, APRS in a nutshell is a way to send text messages and GPS positions over ham radio, similar to what you can do with Meshtastic if you're familiar with that. And for those of you familiar with the BBS for Meshtastic, we're also working on a version of that for APRS that you'll be able to use with this radio and other APRS radios, so be sure to stay tuned for updates on that. There's a number of APRS capable radios out there and a few capable of pairing with your phone like the Kenwood THD75 and THD74. While I do love the new Kenwood THD75, the radio is rather pricey at $750. Even its predecessor, the THD74, still runs for about triple the price of the VRN76 I'm reviewing today when searching for it on the used market. Yezu also has a number of APRS capable radios and while they are less expensive than the Kenwood, the problem with Yezu APRS radios is they don't have the ability to pair with your phone and texting back and forth directly from the radio on any of these radios is generally a painful experience and only suitable for sending a few messages here and there in a pinch or just beaconing out your location. Because of that, I recommend getting APRS capable radios that have the ability to pair with your phone or just save your money and get a non-APRS capable radio and use the money you save to add something like a mobile linked TNC4 to give you the ability to pair with your phone and do APRS. But with this new VRN76, we now have a radio that's not only less expensive than the Kenwood and Yezu options, it also has the ability to pair with a phone to not only do APRS but also do radio control, frequency programming, communication audio recording, and even send and receive pictures via SSTV. This radio also has a feature that I really like that I've not seen on any of the other APRS radios and it has a signaling option that allows you to send certain packets of data at the end of your voice transmissions. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. And it lets you specify what data you want to send, like your ID, which could actually be a tactical call sign as long as you're using your FCC call sign appropriately during the voice traffic. And you can also set it to send your GPS location. I can see this being a useful feature for a number of applications, including covering public service activities where you need to keep track of locations of team members. We also have this allow check option, and what this option does is allow the radio to respond to an interrogation signal from another radio. So for example, if you haven't transmitted in a while and another team member wants to see your current location, they can transmit a signal using this check option and the radio will respond with the data that's usually transmitted at the end of the voice transmissions. So that's for interrogating a specific radio. In addition to that, there's also the nearby people option, which will send the request to all radios within reach and receive the data from all of them that have the allow check option enabled. Now, I was hoping that this was using the APRS protocol, but as we can see in the direwolf logs here, while it does decode the ID, it's not completely AX25 compliant, which is the base protocol that APRS uses. It turns out that it's using something called BSS, which is their own packet radio protocol, but more on that later. 
So let's go over the radio itself and then we'll get into the app. The power output is listed as 7 watts on their website and they also mention that it has an IP67 rating, which is a rating for being submerged in 1 meter of water for up to 30 minutes. I've not tested this myself, but the radio itself does appear to be pretty rugged and waterproof as I dropped it in the creek for a bit to test its waterproofness. The radio comes in a multitude of colors, which I of course had to go with the FDE coyote or desert color, I believe they call it on their website. The overall feel of the radio is good, and while it's not a tank like the Motorola XTS 2500, which could also double as a weapon, the N76 feels solid enough to take somewhat of a beating outdoors. As far as buttons go, we have the usual PTT button on the side, along with two programmable buttons below that, and on the front we have a full keypad and D-pad and buttons for navigating the menu directly on the device. Then on top we have the power and volume knob, an LED, an area that says GPS, which is where I assume the GPS patch antenna is located. Then of course we have a removable SMA antenna. And finally, we have the all-important USB-C port for charging the radio, which I'm happy to see as I'm trying to use USB-C for as many things as I can. There's also an optional Bluetooth PTT mic available for it, and they're available in black or the desert color to match the radio I have here. Now onto the app. One of the standout features of the N76 for me is the ability to pair the radio with a phone for use with their app for easy messaging back and forth like I mentioned earlier. The map is the first thing we'll see when opening up the app with some options on the side here that we'll take a look at starting with the top right where we have different mapping options like the base map, satellite map, a couple terrain map options, and one neat feature we can see below the map options are these checkboxes for space station and amateur radio satellite. So with the space station checked, let's take a look at that on the map here. And if we zoom out and search around a bit, we can see the current location of the International Space Station, as well as Tiangong, which is China's space station. If we select one of the space stations, we can get info about when it'll be overhead. The reason this is relevant and why this info is here is because these space stations actually have ham radio payloads like repeaters and digipeaters for APRS, which means that you can use these to communicate with others when the space station is overhead. There are even times when the astronauts aboard the space station hop on the radio themselves, giving you the opportunity to communicate with an astronaut. If we go back to the map options and select amateur radio satellite, we can see a bunch of satellites with ham radio payloads as well. We won't go too deep into the subject in this video, but we'll be doing a series of videos on satellite comms, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on that. Moving on down the list, we have this target button which zooms into your location. This star button toggles the location of other stations on and off. The clock button will let you filter out the position of others based on time frame and below that you can record tracks as KML files when you select this infinity button. Then further down we have two buttons here. The top one takes you to the message screen and the other one is the member screen which shows you a list of other stations. Then finally if we switch back to the map view we have this green microphone button which allows you to transmit audio from your phone's mic through the radio which is handy. Now if we go back to the messaging screen, on the bottom right we have this map pin that'll take us to a map with our current location. And we can either hit send now to send the current location, or we can scroll the map around until the pin is at the location we'd like to send. Now back to the messaging screen again, we can see where it says hold to speak, and this is because we have the voice option selected, and this is for using the radio through the phone's mic like we saw earlier. If we tap on this microphone on the bottom left, that'll show us the other options like voice, which we're currently in, Morse code, text, DTMF, and picture. If we go ahead and select text, we can type in text messages. Now, messages without a call sign will use the BSS protocol. To send a message to a specific APRS user, you would send a message with their call sign and SSID, followed by a colon, and then the message you'd like to send. The app will also send and decode Morse code and DTMF, but it's pretty straightforward and I won't go over that here. I do want to show the picture option though, so let's change modes once again and select picture. 
Now this uses SSTV as mentioned earlier and you just select a picture from your phone you'd like to send and then select the SSTV mode. And we'll just stick with the default robot 36 for this demo and hit the play button to send. The app itself is able to decode incoming SSTV signals and there's also software to decode SSTV like this one for Windows I'm using called MMSTV. Sending pictures using anything on these lower bandwidth frequencies is going to be a pretty slow process so we'll speed up the video here. And here we have the completed picture. Another feature I really like is how all of the incoming and outgoing radio communications get recorded and show up in the main message window here. Then you can just tap on one of them to replay the recording. This is a test of the communications record feature. Now if we open up the hamburger menu on the top left, we can see all of the currently programmed channels, which are these 16 squares we see here. The radio can have a total of 192 channels programmed in, but there are 12 groups of 16 channels, so that's something you want to keep in mind when programming it, so you program in groups that make sense. To select a channel, you simply tap on it from the screen and the radio will tune to the selected channel. So that's a quick rundown of the features I wanted to highlight on this radio. If you've been curious about APRS or want a good APRS capable radio that won't break the bank, this one is a really great option that even provides some features and ruggedness that the other APRS radios don't have. If you'd like to pick one up for yourself, VGC has provided me with an affiliate code for my viewers of TCC that you can enter in at checkout for $10 off your purchase and I'll have an affiliate link to purchase in the video description below. There's more stuff we'll be getting into later videos with this, like the BSS protocol, which based on some of these options appears to have some routing and forwarding functionality like a mesh network or digipeter. I actually really like this radio and I'll be ordering one with my own money, so I'll have another one of them to dig into the BSS protocol stuff a bit more. We'll also be getting into more APRS related content, including the APRS version of the BBS, so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you won't miss on that and more. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up. It really helps and I appreciate it. Thank you all and have a good one.